today is the 26th of April uh, 2023. So the House of Lords in England is advocating for the cancellation of President Emerson Nangago's invitation to attend the coronation of King Charles III due to alleged human rights abuses in Zimbabwe. President Nangagwa has accepted the invitation and sees it as a positive step towards improving relations between Zimbabwe and the United Kingdom. He met with the UK ambassador to Zimbabwe, Melalyn uh, Robson, on April 17 to discuss the matter and also matters of trade and investment. Nevertheless, uh, some British members of parliament believe that inviting the leader of Zimbabwe was a mistake. They said, uh, there's a letter here, which is a uh, dear foreign secretary, we urge you to reconsider the government's advice to Beckenham Palace on the invitation of President Nangagwa to the coronation in the light of the grave political and human rights situation in Zimbabwe. To summarize, political violence and human rights abuses are widespread with opposition members of parliament and party members harassed, beaten, imprisoned and murdered. Corruption is rife, extending to the highest levels of government, destroying the economy and provisioning the Zimbabwe people and the judiciary. The Zimbabwe Electoral Commission and all institutions of the state have been suborned to the ruling party. The main opposition party leader, Nelson Chamisa, is habitually denied permission to hold rallies and his political activities are frequently disrupted by violence and PF supporters and the police force. The Zimbabwe Electoral Commission appointees are overwhelming. ZANPF supporters, including the sons and daughters of key ZANPF party officials. It is more than 300 days since Citizens Coalition for Change, Triple C, Deputy Chairperson Job Scala MP, was detained after providing legal representation to the family of murdered opposition campaigner Mo Blessing Ali. Since then, he has been held without trial in Chukurubi, maximum security prison, and denied his constitutional right to bail. In response to Mr. Scala's detention, the Inter-Parliamentary Union said on October 22, 2022 that it fails to understand how his detention in a maximum security prison and is alarmed by allegations that Mr. Scala is being held in inhuman conditions. In 2020, opposition MP Joanna Mamombe and supporters uh, Cecilia Chimbiri and Natsai Marua were detained by police for taking part in a protest and subsequently abducted from Arari Central Police Station, tortured, sexually assaulted and dumped by roadside. On June 10, 2020, five special procedures experts of the UN Human Rights Council issued a statement calling on, on the Zimbabwean authorities to urgently prosecute and punish the perpetrators of this outrageous crime and to immediately enforce a policy of zero tolerance for abductions and torture throughout the country. Instead of the arrest of the perpetrators, the three victims were charged with publishing a false statement prejudicial to the state for daring to report the crime. Three years on, Joanna and Cecilia continue to face state-sponsored harassment through the courts. Their colleague Netsai Marowa managed to escape from the country and gain sanctuary in Norway. On November 27, 2022, a Triple C rally was attacked in Kwekwe. Bonani Mube, a 30-year-old Triple C supporter, was killed and at least 17 others were seriously injured. Speaking at a ZNPF rally in Mbizo Stadium in Kwekwe the previous day, Zimbabwe's Vice President Konatino Chiwenga told the crowd that ZNPF would crush the Triple C party like lies. In October 2022, Blau MP Jasmine Tofa had her arms fractured in an attack by ZNPF supporters when she was campaigning for a local council candidate and there are regular reports of local party campaigners and councillors being attacked, tortured and murdered with direct incitement from ZNPF leaders. This month on April 6, Amnesty International shared a statement on the conviction of opposition party spokesperson Fadzai Mahere, saying the conviction of Fadzai Mahere on April 5, 2023 is a travesty of justice as it is based on a law that is no longer exists in Zimbabwe and applied to silence the dissent. The legal provision that was used to convict Mahere was declared void by the Constitutional Court in 2014. The High Court confirmed this in another case in 2021. The magistrate court in this case should have taken note of the decisions of the upper courts and acquitted Mahere. The conviction and sentencing demonstrate 
the right to freedom of expression, the authorities are sending a clear message that there is no space for exercising the right to freedom of expression in Zimbabwe, a chilling recent development in the issuing of direct threats through the Twitter account of the President's Office of Communication. The prominent human rights and pro-democracy advocate Makomborero Aruzivishe had a menacing tweet directing at him following his attendance at the House of Lords debate in January. Then again, just two weeks ago, when he spoke out about corruption, a further threat was tweeted. Do you remember when we sent a team to abduct you and you were begging for your life with agents in your location? Both came from the account of George Charamba, Deputy Chief Secretary of Presidential Communications in the Office of the President of Zimbabwe. As President of the Zimbabwe National Students Union, Zinasu, Akomorero Aruzivishe was the target of continuous intimidation and prosecutorial harassment, which include testing arrest and detention without trial of 11 months. 2023 is already proven to be a year of heightening tension due to planned elections in July. Independent sources, including Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and Reporters Without Borders, are recording rising levels of political repression, arbitrary, and political motivated arrest of elected opposition party members and intimidation of the press. At the same time, the recommendations of the Commission of Inquiry, led by a former South African President Khalema Motlati, which was established to investigate widespread violence in the aftermath of the August 2018 elections, have still not been implemented. The coronation invitation will inevitably be used by President Nangawa as acceptance by the UK of publicly evidenced political violence and repression in the run-up to the forthcoming election and will be deeply demoralizing to ordinary Zimbabweans in their struggle for democracy. We therefore urge the government to withdraw President Nangagwa's invitation and two Job Sikala MP and other political prisoners are granted their constitutional right to bail and concrete actions are taken to address human rights abuses and guarantee free and fair elections. So guys, that's the latest here. It's coming from British uh, MPs and advocating uh, cancellation of Nangagwa's invitation to King Charles III coronation which is happening in May. And so I could I am Nangagwa in Zimbabwe. As Kwada Kuno, reason why is because of human rights abuses in Zimbabwe and the current situation in Rimo. I mean, what I need to go to the job scala and the Nina Jacare Yana Joana Mumbe and the Tai Chambiri, Slea Maroa, Vakab Dakto Makurae, and the Amnuzania Chokutina Nasi, each could quote. And at the same time, uh, they talked also about Nya Bonin Mube Akasha last year. We all know the whole story in Kwekwe, and he was killed by suspected as an NPF um, party members. May he so rest in peace. So guys, get it in the comment section. We'll be keeping you up to date with the latest here on daily news, breaking news, everyday news on Prince Miller Entertainment TV. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Bless up.